Ever wonder if two correlations from two different samples are significantly different? Of course you have. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to do a Fisher's R to Z transformation. That is the test that we're going to use to see if these two correlations are different from each other or not. Okay. The information that you need is... From your first group, you need the correlation and the sample size. Same from the second group. Okay, the little ones and twos, those are simply indexes, okay, that tell me which group they're connected to. So I'm getting all this information from this output from SPSS. Um, so the first group, their correlation is 0.169. Second group, 0.301. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger for you. Okay, there's that. And degrees of freedom for a correlation, if you didn't know, is the total sample size minus two, right? Because there's there's two variables in a correlation, so that's why you minus two. So you would add two to both of those to get the sample size. So the sample size for the first group is 28 and for the second group is 23. But now let's just substitute the values. And here we go. Okay. That's where we start. Now it's going to get kind of ugly with the calculations, but nothing too bad if you've had an algebra course. So we're going to transform those values into what we call Z prime. That's what the one means. It's a Z prime score. And there's the formula. So to change anything into a Z prime, you take 0.5, you multiply by the, that's a natural logarithm of one plus the correlation divided by one minus the correlation. And that Fisher guy, man, he was so smart. I couldn't believe it. So we're going to substitute values. And there they are. And we get that. We do some algebra. Actually, that's arithmetic. And we're going to divide that. So we're looking for the natural log of 1.4067. And use your calculator, and you should come out with this. Remember, natural log, that's that crazy E number. So 0.5 times that natural log is 17. Okay, so that's that's group one's Z prime score. I'm going to move it up here. Now we're going to do group two. Same thing, right? But uh, again, the two doesn't mean squared. It just means we're doing the second group, right? And there's our group two data. Correlation, sample size. And we substitute known values, do a little bit of math, do a little bit more math, take the natural log of 1.8612, and we get that number, and we multiply that by 0.5, and we get our second Z prime. So this is the Z prime for the second correlation, move it up there. Now we got to calculate the standard error. It's actually the pooled standard error. But I got a formula for it. So it's the first sample size minus three. That is the denominator. And the second one is the sample size. Second sample size minus three. That's the denominator. And again, we're just going to plug in known values and do a little bit of math. Now, I actually use my algebra, right? I know that 100 would be a perfect denominator for both of these because that's four times 25 is 100 and it's five times so I simply turned them into this and since they have similar denominators I could go ahead and add them and I get 9 over 100 the square root of 0 0.09 use your calculator and it comes out to be 0.3 okay so that's our standard error so now we're going to calculate what I call the final Z, okay? We're going to use this crazy formula. We're going to subtract the second correlation, or I'm sorry, the second Z prime from the first Z prime divided by the standard error. So let's do that. And so this is the first correlation, second correlation, and that's the standard, the pooled standard error there. And we're going to get that number. Now remember, that's a Z score. So from a z-score, back from way back to from basic statistics, we're going to look up the p-value for that z-score. And I'm going to go ahead and use Excel. Please hold. 
we get a, a blank Excel. I'm just going to pick a cell, any cell. I'm going to go up to the function bar. Let me move this a little bit over. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Going to go to the magic function bar there. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go to statistical. Make sure I'm in statistical. And I'm going to scroll down to norm dist. Norm dist. Is that the right one? No. Norms dist. The one with an S. Norms dist. Click that in there. My z-score is negative 0.467, negative 0.467. And cumulative is always true for us, true. And we should get a p-value. And we do, we got a p-value of 0.32. I'm just rounding it up to 0.32. Now, you could have just looked this up at a table, but, you know, tables are kind of dead. So let me switch back. Please hold. All right. So the p-value is 0.32. Now, as you know, a p-value of 0.32 doesn't prove anything, right? So you fail to reject the null. The null is there's no significant difference between those two bad boys. And, you know, yeah, okay, so there's no significant difference between the two correlations. There is another way. It's a lot easier. We're going to use an online calculator that does this. And there's the link. Like I really got to do is just Google it, and I'm sure somebody will... Pop one in there. So let me let me pull that up. Hold on. All right. By memory. So the first correlation was 0.169. And, oh, got them backwards. Sample size was 28 for the first group. Correlation was at 1.69. Second group, it was 23 sample size. And the correlation was 0 0.301, 0 0.301. And that's, hey, we got the exact same thing. Oh, my God, I got it right. Right, so you get a you get a final Z, what I call a final Z of negative 0.467, p-value of 0.32. And I love it when it comes out, but that's it. Okay, that's how you use the Fisher's R to Z transformation. MGZ, out.